Hey guys, today I want to talk about use of acids in winemaking and how to really take your wine to the next level and make a wine that really just kicks butt and impresses all your friends and neighbors. So one thing I always like to do is just keep my eye on the acids in the wine, um, really try to dial it in just right. And to do, to do that, especially early on when you're sort of working blindly with a really high sugar must, um, you are going to want something like a pH meter, a decent pH meter. So this is the one I use. It's from Apera Instruments and it has three points of calibration. And I'd really recommend this for the price. You could spend a lot of money on a pH meter, but for around the house, this is a pretty great uh, pH meter. And I'll put a link to that in my description. Uh, when, when you're working with a must though, that's say 25% sugar, you just don't taste the acid. You're, you're tasting it and you're like, this just tastes so sweet. How could it have that much acid? But oftentimes um, you'd be surprised where that final number comes at. It's not always the best tasting grapes that make the best wine. So you just got to kind of adjust things just a little bit before starting off. Um, a lot of newbies will use something like acid blend to make the adjustment. And acid blend is just kind of a generic... Thing. It's not it's not always the worst, but at the same time, there's usually a better choice than acid blend for the adjustment for the wine that you're making. Um, acid blend is just a blend of tartaric acid, malic acid, and citric acid. And you don't really know what the blend is. Is it 33% of each of those? Is it 50% of one and 25% of the other two? So that's a reason I don't necessarily steer towards it but there's other bigger reasons and the biggest reason is you just want to choose the right acid for the type of wine that you're making so um, if i'm going to make a, a red grape wine a dry wine i'm going to choose a different acid than if i'm going to make um, an apple wine or if i'm going to try something wild like a pineapple wine or something uh, you really want to try to pair the acid that that kind of matches those fruits so I've got basically the individual acids that make up acid blend sitting in front of me. Malic, citric, tartaric. And tartaric acid is the, it's the leading acid in a grape. Um, so grapes actually do have tartaric acid, malic acid, and citric acid, kind of in that order where it's mostly tartaric, a little bit of malic, and then a, just a fraction of citric acid. Um, for that reason, if I'm adjusting a grape wine, particularly a red grape wine where I want to run that wine dry and keep it dry, I'm going to steer towards the um, tartaric acid. Tartaric acid won't really cause any problems in fermentation. It's not going to cause any unusual flavors that you're not expecting. And and it, it won't really just... It won't do the bad things that adding something like citric acid could do. So I'll talk about that. Um, if you added a little extra malic acid to make an acid adjustment, it's not, number one, it's not really gonna adjust it like you think it's gonna, because if that wine goes through malolactic fermentation, that malolactic bacteria is just gonna metabolize all that malic acid into lactic acid. You're just not gonna get the pH change you want you're also gonna end up with a much more buttery wine, um, like that buttery Chardonnay taste. And be because of that, I'm not saying don't add any. So maybe you might just like love the butter taste. Maybe in that case, you do wanna add a little bit of malic acid. Um, but like I said, I generally will just add tartaric acid. Malic acid is the apple, or is the acid primarily found in apples. Um, so it has that sour apple taste or like the taste of a um, warhead candy or sour patch kid. And that taste by itself in a dry wine is a little bit um, off-putting. That, that malic acid taste generally is reserved for wines that you're going to have like a fruity, fruity taste or you're going to even add a little bit of sugar back to it to kind of offset that sour apple taste. Um, another thing... This is a reason not to use acid blend or just randomly pick an acid. If you were to add citric acid to a, uh, a red wine pre-fermentation and let that wine go through malolactic fermentation after primary fermentation, um, 
that malolactic bacteria, after consuming all the malic acid, will start to consume the citric acid and start to, um, it can actually start to produce acetic acid, which is vinegar. Um, vinegar is obviously not something you want in your wine. So um, that's just a good reason not to just blindly add acid blend or make a um, pH tweak using citric acid. The times when things like citric acid and malic acid are handy are um, if you're making something like an apple wine, you might add a little bit of malic acid. Uh, if you're making something like a crazy, you know, strawberry wine or something like that, you could use a blend of acids, maybe a, a tiny bit of malic, a tiny bit of citric. But you probably wouldn't use tartaric because tartaric's just going to taste really out of place in that situation. Um, I'm not ever really blindly um, adding acids. I'm always kind of targeting a pH value. You can also target a titratable acidity value, but just getting started, I would focus on pH and even having the ability to measure TA or titratable acidity, I'll still generally try to get the pH right over trying to get the TA right. So the pH meter is really something pretty important to have. Um, the second time you're going to want to adjust the acid is at the very end when you're just kind of dialing that wine in to get it just right for bottling. And that's when I'll kind of pull out the wild cards and sometimes break the rules. If I'm making like a sweet wine, like a Concord wine, you might intentionally want to use a tiny bit of malic acid to draw out the fruit. You still um, generally might err towards the tartaric acid. Maybe on a sweet wine like that, maybe you might even try a little bit of citric acid. But at this point, usually, unless your pH has drifted really to a bad place, your acid adjustments are going to be too taste. So the key there is really just to, to do a little trial blend. So get um, maybe a graduated syringe or a graduated cylinder and pour 50 milliliters of wine in five different little cups and then start just making really, really subtle acid adjustments uh, with each one of these acids and just kind of feel out what that wine needs to be right. And when you're tasting it, um, make sure you taste it at the temperature that you plan to serve it at because what will happen with something like those sweet wines is you'll plan to serve them chilled. So you'll make that wine and you'll think this really needs a little bit more acid, but you're drinking it at room temperature. So when you chill that down, that acid might start to really come out. Um, the sugar will no longer taste so syrupy and it just won't quite, quite taste right. So make some test blends, use um, a cheap little gram scale. You can get these on Amazon for like $10. I'll put a link in the description for one of those too. And when you get it just right, then apply it to the total batch and always kind of err on the side of don't over apply acid because it's it's a lot harder to take acid out of a wine and I generally don't want to have to do that but there are ways and I'll talk about that in another episode but yeah just kind of sneak up on the number let it kind of spend a couple days in the carboy before you actually go to bottle it just make sure it's just right before you bottle it and um, I think you'll be really surprised with the quality of wine you can make so instead of saying this wine's okay, I'm going to bottle it. You can get it a lot better before bottling it. Um, before I finish up here, I'll also mention the ultimate way to adjust your acid is by blending. Um, so in a perfect world, if you have a Cabernet Sauvignon that is at a pH of 3.8 and you're really targeting a 3.7 um, because you want that to age better, you don't want it to taste flabby as they would say, a low acid wine taste. Um, the ideal scenario there is that you just so happen to have another carboy of, of Cabernet Sauvignon or maybe Merlot or something that blends well with that, that has a pH of 3.55 or 3.6, um, and you can blend those wines together in some ratio to get that, that finished wine just right. So I always look for opportunities to do that, um, before I kind of jump to the bags of acid. But um, 
yeah, you just you just don't always have that opportunity as a home winemaker. So I like to just have a lot of wines laying around. Sometimes I'll bottle um, all but a gallon of a wine and leave it on the shelf just for future opportunities when I might need a blender. Uh, but hopefully this helps your acid uh, situation in your wines. One thing that I wanted to ask the the viewers, so in a red wine, you do have oftentimes have lactic acid from the, the output of that malolactic fermentation. I've never added, specifically added lactic acid at the end before bottling to dial in a wine. And I'm curious if anybody has done that. And if they had, I'd like to hear how that worked out. Um, it might just be another little home winemaking trick you can keep on your shelf. I'm not sure if that's necessarily allowed in a winery, so you probably would rarely see it there. But in the home, you kind of have a little bit more freedom to, to try things out. So if you like this video, just make sure that you um, click the little subscribe button to keep up to date on things. Check out my website, smartwinemaking.com. And I'd love to hear any feedback below in the comments section. Good luck making your wine, and thanks for watching.